are so many stories from that day, including Raquel Lee. She has been to the Allen Premium outlets plenty of times, but this time she came back home, thankfully, but she came back home a different woman, a woman more in love with herself, her family, and very sure of her faith. A woman humbled to share her testimony with me about what life is like one year later after witnessing one of the worst mass shootings in our history. May 6, 2020, 2023, how did that day change you? It made me appreciate life more. Um, it made me appreciate life more like you don't think that you're going to face death in the face. Death was the last thing Raquel Lee expected to encounter when she made the 50 minute drive from Forney to celebrate Mother's Day weekend. My husband told me to go and have some time out. He had my kids who were at the time one and four. And um, I was just excited to like be out without a stroller. It only took three minutes for everything to change. I know that my life's testimony is one to the glory of God. She says she stopped in a store she never shops at, and then she heard it. Which at the time, I don't think anyone expected that they were gunshot. It wasn't until I saw someone run past the window and be shot in their back that I realized it was a shooting. And then you just hear chaos. Piercing fear left Raquel frozen until she felt the warm, thoughtful hand of a stranger. And the store associate, she ended up pulling my arm and she was saying, get everyone in the employee break room. Looking back on it now, do you feel like the store employee was an angel? Oh, for sure. If she walked by right now, I couldn't even remember what she looked like just because that day is so heavy, but um, she is an angel. What would you want to say to her today? I owe her a lot. I don't feel like I would be here if she hadn't pulled me out of that area. She was able to save our lives. She and 10 others protected by prayers and a metal door. You hear the screams, you hear the cries. Everyone in that closet was praying in their own language. It was actually a beautiful reflection. I think of just humanity and religion and background and ethnicity, like everybody there was from different backgrounds. A poetic juxtaposition as Raquel managed to type what she thought would be her last text to her family. I love you. I'm an Allen. If I don't talk to you, I'm sorry or something. It was very disjointed, such a weird goodbye message when you think about it but at the time you're just trying to like get as many words as you can out because I honestly thought that he was coming in there for us next. After two long hours in a hot small closet they were freed by a SWAT team. Come on out, come on out. I saw the people that were shot because we were in such proximity. We were the last door to get evacuated first. I didn't want to open the door for anyone. There were pregnant women in there. There was a young child in there. Um, and it wasn't until they identified themselves, we opened the door and you're just literally walking through blood, bags, shopping bags, bodies, and you're just seeing it all. And you see action movies or, you know, uh, get video games, but to see that in real life was devastating. There's plenty Raquel still carries with her about that day. After leaving Allen that day. I haven't been back. But like the store associate who pulled Raquel to safety, she's also grateful for the off-duty officer who faced death to save many lives. I'm mindful and I'm reflective of the lives that we lost and I carry them with me. I feel like I do this and I share this message to be the voice for them. There could have been so much more bloodshed if it had not been for that off-duty officer. Time and tragedy preside as unsuspecting teachers for a mom who thought she'd never make it home to her kids, her husband, or their life together. I laugh more with them. I'm enjoying them. They are just my world. So I have a different appreciation of taking on the challenges of life while still being able to enjoy it. But survivor, that's a title she's still learning to embrace. I almost felt guilty in a way that I saw everything. I saw everyone who was killed, but I was still alive. I felt guilty to call myself 
a survivor because I am still here. If you could fill in the blank, Raquel Lee is, what would you say? The first word that came to mind was resilient. Raquel Lee is resilient, but then also uh, her Raquel Lee is blessed. Well, we sat there, we cried together. Um, it took a lot for her to speak to us, and we are thankful yeah. for that. Um, she knew each victim by name. She called each of their names during our interview, and she was so humbled to be able to sit there and yeah. talk to me. And I'm struck a little bit because something she said there toward the very end, I've heard from first responders as well, and mm -hmm. that is the survivor guilt. Mm -hmm. that, that's a real thing. It's a real thing, and she did say, you know, that the city was great about um, providing resources for people who had survived, people who had been through this. Um, she was really open about her treatment. Um, she admitted to having hallucinations even after. She plots exits when she goes to places. So for her, this is such a big moment of where she's come from yeah. and her progress to getting here. So. And the sad reality is people that we talk to in moments like this all the time, it's always, it's never you yeah. until suddenly it's you. Yeah, that's the first yeah. thing she said at the top of that piece was, or the end, was you, you never know when you're going to have your last breath. Yeah. And so for her, living now is very important. A sobering perspective.